So I thought I I was looking at your question about trying to factor uh, this this polynomial. So I didn't know if you'd seen uh, the box and diamond method. I'll show it to you. Unfortunately, it won't work for this question. But you put your first term here, last term here, and you put the first times the last term in that part of the diamond, and you put the middle term there. And then what you ask yourself, what can I multiply to give me 120x squared that'll add to give me positive 13x? So I didn't see it up top of my head, so I started doing a bunch of factoring, and I knew that 10 times 12 is 120, and 10 is 2 times 5, and 12 is 2 times 6, and then I still couldn't see any combination that would give me 13x. So then I continued, well, 2 times 5 is already fully factored, but 2 times 6 factors, 2 times 2 times 3. Then what you can do once you get these prime factors is, you know, group different numbers, different pairs of them together, pairs or, or three numbers together, and see if you can't get 13x in this case. Um, I couldn't see it. So then I thought about, I, thought, I said all this work just to realize this is what's underneath the square root for the quadratic formula. And if this is a negative number, or if it's if it's a negative number, or if it's a, not a perfect square, that means it doesn't factor. And so I said 13, let's see, what is it? 13 squared is 169, and then 4 times 2 times 60 works out to be negative 240. Well, 169 minus 240 is a negative number. So this doesn't factor, which means all the solutions to this quadratic equation are, are imaginary, complex. So there's no real zero, so that tells me that the, this is never equal to zero. So it doesn't, so the rational function doesn't cross the x-axis. Now, I didn't look at the myopen math question, so I'm not quite sure what it's asking you to do. Um, it's been a while since I've looked at it. So what I did is I went ahead and factored the denominator, because I want to figure out what this graph looks like uh, without graphing it on, on Desmos. So I said, I factored the denominator to that. I'm, you didn't ask about that, so I'm assuming that you can do that. And then when is this equal to, so what I didn't do in this paper, I said, when is that equal to zero? Well, it's equal to zero um, when x equals negative two-thirds, right? When subtract two, divide by three, and add three. So those are the two vertical asymptotes. I know there's vertical asymptotes and not holes because they don't, the numerator doesn't factor and I can't cancel anything, right? Um, Remember, if there's a hole in the graph, I'll have I'll have something like 2x plus 1 over x minus 3 over 3x plus 2 times x minus 3. And because you're the common factor x minus 3, that would tell me there's a hole at, at, at positive 3. But that doesn't happen here, so um, don't have to worry about that. Um, so then I wanted to test and see what it looked like. And... So I, I said, well, I know that I sketched in the vertical asymptotes. And then I said, okay, let's figure out when I'm less than negative two-thirds, what's happening? Well, I know the numerator is always positive because it opens up and there's no, no real zero. So that never happens. And the denominator will be positive because if I say I substitute in negative 10, that's a negative number. And that's a negative number. And negative times a negative is positive. So positive divided by positive, positive. This tells me it's going to be above the x-axis. Now, I could do the same thing for in here and the same thing in here. However, I know that because neither of these denominator factors are squared, the vertical asymptotes at each, side, at each of them, I mean, the function on either side of these vertical asymptotes acts like 1 over x. And since I know this is going to be above the x-axis, I know this has to be below the x-axis. And then I said, well, let's find that y-intercept. So if you go back and look at that original function, right? What is this? Uh, uh, 3x squared uh, minus 9 plus 2 minus 7x plus uh, minus 6 minus 6. And 2x squared plus 13x plus 60 is the numerator. Now, if I substitute in 0, that's gone, that's gone, because those are zeros. 60 divided by negative 6 is negative 10. So I knew that was the y-intercept right there, negative 10. So that tells me this graph, I'll sketch it in, I'll sketch it in green. I know it has to come up as it approaches the y, two-thirds, negative two-thirds on the left, it goes down to negative infinity, comes up. I know it can't cross the x-axis because there's no real zeros. So this function has to turn around somewhere and head down this way. And because this function acts like 
uh, 1 over x at this intercept, I know is going to come down like this, be above the x-axis, never cross it. So I know that's what that graph looks like. And uh, I don't know what's happening and what I don't, you know, without going and looking at my math to help me any further. Um, but that's what the sketch looks like. And I did that without having to do a whole heck of a lot of number calculation, right? Factoring was the worst of it. Okay, so hopefully this helps you out.